The V8 is back, baby, and here it is in the new KN GTS. And today we're finding out if it has been well worth the wait to put the V8 back into its rightful place in the KN. So I'm gonna let you know if it's well worth buying one of these and let you know what this is like to drive. This is Product Review Cars. My name's Cameron, let's get on with it. So here's the KN in GTS flavor. It's meant to look menacing. It's meant to look more performance orientated, more aerodynamic, and it definitely does. We have some blacked out grills and we have some extra body kit happening around the front. We also have these distinct headlights that you can see on the new KNs. Love the design of those and some carbon fiber splash on the front, which is an option. We have some body colored cladding here, which is normally plastic on some of the lower models, but here it just blends in with the side of the car and makes it look a lot wider. We have 21 inch RS spider wheels which inside those we have 390 millimeter front brakes which are absolutely massive we also have some carbon mirrors here which again an option and we have black door handles which yes an option and then you can see up to here this is where the KN similarities end and towards the back we then have the coupe element and so it's a sloping roof line it looks fantastic in the flesh on photos it can look a little bit awkward but here it definitely suits the personality of the car. You can see the actual spoiler that's up here. It looks a lot more functional than it does on other cars. And there's a second spoiler, which you could probably see peeking around the back. Moving here, yes, some more RS Spider wheels. But the cool thing is, is that it's actually a staggered tire size. So at the front, we have 275 millimeter front tires. And at the back, we have 315 millimeter tires. So it's rear bias and we're going to see why that's an advantage later. Moving around the back, here we have KN GTS badge and I love that GTS name, I'm sure you do too. And you've got that Porsche logo embossed into the light bar at the back. It all looks really good here. We have quad pipes here. For anyone wondering where the double pipes have gone, well that is a 14 thousand dollar option and you have to option that in Australia along with the lightweight package so if you see one take a photo because that's definitely going to be a rare option in Australia so here we have the normal sports exhaust system it's valved it sounds brilliant <laughs> The KN GTS has 100 liters less boot space with all the seats up than the normal KN. So that's the sacrifice you're making when you're going for a better looking car, because if you like the look of this, you do have to make a small sacrifice with the boot space, seeing how this comes down quite abruptly. You can only have oh so tall items in the back. With all the seats folded down, it's 1,680 liters of boot space. So it's really generous when you put all the seats down and it is a 40-20-40 split. If you have a big item that you don't want to lift so high up, you can request the GTS to fall to the ground by using a button in here, which lowers just the back part of the suspension and just makes it just that little bit easier to step items in and out. So what's going on and how do you digest an interior as gorgeous as this? Well, first of all, it's the GTS. So you can see GTS up here on the headrest and some Alcantara everywhere. So it is a nice place to be. Also, draw your eyes to the clock here on the dash. That's the sports chrono package. That also helps with performance and adding launch control. But here it's standard on the coupe models. So it's cool to see here on the GTS. In front of us, we have the classic Porsche gauge setup. It's the five dials with the rev counter right in the middle and some displays on either side, which you can easily cycle through. The steering wheel is perfectly sized, not too big, not too small. And there's a few things on here that are pretty important. It's mainly this drive mode button. So you can go through all the different options, but mainly the thing you're interested in is sports and sport plus. You also have an individual mode. So if you like the loud exhaust, but don't really want a sporty setup for corners, you can do that with individual mode. But here you can easily access all your drive modes. In the middle, we have a big center display. It's the Porsche display that everyone's seen in all the new cars like the 911 Macan, it's everywhere now. First seen in the Panamera. Really nice, easy to use, got drive modes in there, can access all the different information about your car, but also stuff like Apple CarPlay navigation, etc. Lovely display to use, nice and integrated into the dash, looks really nice. Here we have all our haptic buttons. So if you're familiar with Porsche, you know there's a ton of buttons in the middle of the dash. Here, they're all on a gloss black surface and they're haptic to touch. 
Normally I don't like that, but here Porsche have done it in such a way that the haptic response sound is so satisfying. It's like a nice click and you know when you're clicking something. However, having a button is easier to feel around when you're not looking because you're focusing on driving. We also have some contrasting stitching and also some crayon seatbelts, which is part of a package which costs over $4,000 to get that stitching put in. So you want to know how practical the back seats are in a Cayenne GTS Coupe because otherwise you'd be going for a 911, wouldn't you? So in the back there's plenty of space for your knees and that's thanks to these one-piece design front seats which look really nice, hug the front passengers really well, have really nice soft leather but if you have kids or dogs or whatever in the back or just unruly adults they're not going to scratch up that leather because there's a nice hard plastic on the back which is soft to the touch but it's going to protect these front seats. In the middle we have a little shelf in the center console, two USB-C connections and we also have another shelf below that. I am just astounded that the coupe version of a large SUV is comfortable with headroom. So let's talk price because that's definitely part of buying a Porsche. There's a lot of prices here so I've got my notes and I'm going to walk you through the range and what options this has. The range for the Cayman Coupe starts off at around $128,000 before on roads. That's the single turbo petrol V6 and it's really because you like the styling of the coupe and you want to get into the Porsche range. Sure it's a brilliant car but this is the GTS. This is really the one that everyone wants. So this one starts at $197,800, which makes it one of the most expensive cars we tested here at Product Review Cars. And it's not even the most expensive k and Coupe you can buy. The top of the range one, which is the Turbo SE Hybrid, that one is $292,700 before on roads. Makes this look like quite a good deal at the end of the day, doesn't it? So. What options have we got here? I've talked about some carbon bits and pieces and some contrasting stitching. Let's walk through them. This has a carbon exterior design package, which is $4,370. You've got a roof spoiler painted in black, which is $810, which you can see up here. You've got door handles painted in black, which are $500. You can see these right here. And then you've got 18-way seats inside, which are $800. And then you've also got an interior package in carbon, which is those bits of carbon fiber you see splashed around the interior. That's $1,800. And then here's for the kicker. The GTS interior package in crayon, which is the type of color you've seen on the seat belts and the stitching, that's $4,550, which makes all the other ones look like a bit of a bargain. So that brings the total price of this car to $210,630 before on roads. That's $12,830 worth of options. Is it worth it? Absolutely yes, if you want your car to be bespoke to you. What we have here is Porsche's four liter twin turbo V8, which yes, Porsche developed, and now the rest of the VW group uses. So. This is a Porsche engine through and through first. This is seen in other cars like the RS Q8 and the Urus and the Bentayga. However, for this car, you can definitely tell that Porsche has got a better grip on it. So we have 338 kilowatts and 620 newton meters of torque. That is gobs of power. And in terms of horsepower, it's around 450 horsepower. That's a lot of power, but the brilliant thing is, is that it's not too much. It is a very good use of power in here because what you're going to get is enough to throw your head back and op wide open your eyes but you're also going to get enough power to satiate yourself through corners and get real performance out of this car now porsche put the 4 liter v8 into this because this is the gts gts stands for gran turismo sport it's a nameplate that goes back to the early 60s in racing meant to be that you get sports car and race car performance however you're in gt luxury so you're feeling comfortable at the end of a race but you can have good pace that is very much true for this car this screams gts it's meant to be the most driver focused kn of the range and that's what gts is so if you're looking for the most driver focused version of each model line in porsche the gts is the one you want and that's why porsche have gone with this four liter v8 it makes a cracking sound that you can probably hear in the back and i put this in sport plus because we're on some good bit of tarmac and that's exactly 
what mode you want it in. There's a few things going on with this car on the technical aspect. So for those of you saying, I'm just gonna get myself an RSQ8, it's got more power and straight line speed, good for you, but this is shorter in its wheelbase, it's wider and it's lower. So this car is a much better handling car than the RSQ8 in those physical aspects. It also helps that Porsche puts 85% of its power to the rear wheels and 15% of the front in the most dynamic settings when applicable. So that translates to awesome speed and awesome traction because you have the wider tires at the back and it means through corners, you're gonna get great grip and great acceleration because it's just that easy to get out of corners um, when you've got that much meat on the back tires and also when you send that much power to the rear wheels. <laughs> that noise, that's the reason why they brought it back. GTS is the most driver engaging car of the range. So you definitely get that with the sound, the performance, and this is the most rear wheel drive bias KN that you can get, which really helps for tight corners because it just means that you can get yourself out of them a bit better. <laughs> and the noise is just incredible. So, I'm gonna shut up for five minutes and let you just listen to the noise in this car. It is such a good noise and it is so good to have that V8 back in the KN. There's another thing to add, you do have a sports response button. So it's a little button in the middle of the drive modes here on the steering wheel and what happens when you press that? So now a countdown begins in the gauge cluster and I'm getting 17, 16 and basically that means the car is in its most sporty settings, which means that when you need to overtake on the track or on the road, you've got the settings so like having it right there. Also these brakes, 390 millimeters on the front, that is incredible. And that just means that you can come to a stop and pull up nearly, not even nearly, it's over two ton. This is 2.1 ton, which is, seems heavy, but it's a lot lighter than some other cars can get. Oh, <laughs> it's the torque that's intoxicating and the sound. This is the reason why you get this over the S. Sure, the S has very similar performance, but the GTS just awakens the inner driving in you. Seriously, it does. You just want to be driving this through roads just like this. And in summary, it is one of the best handling SUVs I've been in. And it just takes me back to the days when working with Porsche, <laughs> And you can get absolutely nuts with going through corners in cars as big as this because it handles just like a little hot hatch. And to be honest, this is the can you really want if you can grab it. Now, should you buy a Porsche Cayenne GTS? On roads like this, absolutely. I can see the hesitation for the bigger fuel bill in something like this, or say the bigger price tag, but if you're in the market for a performance coupe design SUV, it doesn't get better than the KN GTS. It's built for outright performance. It's built from the people who know how to make plenty good sports cars. So it is not only rational, but it is definitely true that this is the best handling and driver engaging performance SUV. Sure, you can get the ones that go quick and not to 100, but this is the one that's gonna deliver all the smiles getting there. So I think definitely buy a KN GTS if you're looking for a car to give you a bit more excitement in your life, but also it's still an SUV, so you're still practical. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron. You watched a product review cars review. If you wanna see more like this, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and obviously comment 
if you get a Porsche Cayenne GTS, because I certainly would, if you couldn't tell already by my smile on my face or the merch I'm wearing. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.